opening page for Flexim. I'm just going to click on the new because we're going to do a new model. We get the standard uh, settings. Uh, some of the tutorials, we, uh, it's very important here you uh, set this up correctly. Um, most Every now and again, it doesn't really matter about the, the, the settings because we're more uh, uh, interested in learning a new technique in Flexim. But it's, uh, it's not a bad idea to get used to um, understanding what you're going to do. So we know that our uh, hand car wash and uh, waxing, uh, we're using minutes. So it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So it's, it's a good idea to change this to minutes. Uh, I am going to lose, uh, I say that the start date is the uh, eight, um, eight o'clock in the morning. And you can see today's date um, uh, is the 31st of the 3rd. I'm going to click on OK. And we get, eventually we get the standard uh, view of Flexim 2020. Down the left hand side, we've got the library that has source, queues, processors, uh, task executors, like operators and stuff. And we'll be using quite a lot of those. Uh, we also have uh, another tab called the toolbox. We will be using the toolbox quite uh, comprehensively in uh, intermediate and advanced tutorials. This is a very basic tutorial today. Uh, along the top, you've got the standard uh, file, open, save, and then you uh, the arrow key, then the A and Q. The, you can see we've got the A, A S, and D, Q. Uh, you can click up here and change from A to S to join objects together, or you can simply hold the A key down at the same time. I tend to use the keyboard. I think it's quicker. Q uh, is like a cancel of those connections. Uh, again, this will uh, all become more apparent as we start uh, using this, the software. We're not going to use most of these. It's a little uh, script. We will use a script uh, in one tutorial um, quite late on in the advanced section. Uh, dashboards. Dashboards are where we get all the data, you know, the pie charts, the the, the graphs to show you, show, you know, the amount of uh, information we can get off Flexim. So, uh, and there's an enormous amount of stuff we can, we get from the dashboards. That's why we're doing the model. We want to find out where the bottlenecks are, how, 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 how many objects we produce in a day, you know, and what the cost of running the factory is. On the next row down is reset, run, stop. Always, always press reset before you run the model. Just get into a habit of doing that because what happens is if you have a complex model, you do a little bit of a change and if you press run, it might be that those changes have not taken place um, and the run is just running the, the previous version of the model. Reset clears everything and make sure that what you're running is uh, or, encompasses all the changes you've done. So make sure you always press reset. Um, so reset, run, stop uh, is just like a normal play. Um, run gives you a slight animation. So if you uh, if you have a, an operator, so I've got an operator here. If I have an operator in the scene, you will see him or her work walking along the factory and going from A to B to C and stuff. Uh, if you don't need to see that animation, you just want to see uh, um, an event, then the next event and stuff, you can just step through them. Room time, that's uh, that's a ticking clock as such. Uh, it tends to default to just uh, an, uh, the normal hours is minutes because we set them out earlier on and it will just tick over. If you want to be, uh, you know, you want to dis design a day, uh, how long a day takes and you want to start at eight o'clock and you want to finish at four o'clock, etc. Um, you can set it in there. We will do it at a later date. And run speed, uh, that is how quickly the simulation works. So you, you don't want to sit here uh, for eight hours watching an eight hour simulation, so you can do fast forward. Uh, down the right hand side, we have uh, quick view options and stuff, uh, which will uh, come into play later on. As it is, uh, let's uh, start our model. Um, so uh, when you, uh, you your cursor, uh, is an, a, a normal arrow key in the 3D scene. When you move it over to the uh, uh, the libraries, you can see it changes to a hand. Um, and what I want to do is grab the source using the left hand mouse key and put it in the scene. You can move it around. For this example, it really does not matter where you put it. I'm just going to put it uh, uh, to the left of the center. We know we've got a, a, a car park. 
we also know we've got a hand wash. Just put it there. A really simple trick uh, is uh, if I know I'm going to put another processor in there. Uh, so that's representing the, uh, the simulation of a car being hand washed. And then I want the same processor type model next to it. So I can hold down the F key and the cursor changes and it allows me to uh, repeat the last command. So if I click there, I've got another processor. They don't look like a car wash and a waxing station and all that. I, in fact, they look a little bit like um, a little conveyor system uh, uh, with a uh, monitor on there and stuff. Uh, but uh, they are, uh, are fine for our examples and stuff. Uh, going and creating a 3D model and getting it to look like a, a car wash or a waxing station is absolutely fine, but it won't do anything to the uh, the, the data that's coming off. So uh, we can leave it. If you're really into your 3D modeling, if you double click on any of these objects, you get a properties window. And in the general tab, you can see that um, where the 3D model is coming from. And it's the 3DS, which is a, an old file format from Autodesk uh, 3D Studio Max. So you can redo your own model and put it in there, but you don't need to do that. Uh, and then we need a sync. So objects coming in from a source, uh, they need to get out, or you put them in uh, the stores area and stuff. I'm happy to send them to sync. So uh, let's double click on source. And it's got a name. Get used to giving your objects really good names uh, so that it makes sense to you. Uh, I drive on the M62 every day, so I'm going to call mine uh, M62. I need to go to my uh, PowerPoint slide now. So let's go to the PowerPoint slide. There we are. Um, uh, we need to. So it says here, we, uh, we then need to add some time information by double clicking on properties and the source as a processing time uh, of 10 for the car wash uh, and 15 for the waxing and objects arrive into into arrival time of six exponential. So let's see what that means in real life. So I've got here, I have into arrival time. How often do objects, sorry, cars come to my car washing factory. So I'm going to click on the drop down here. And we've got statistical distributions. You've got all these different statistical distributions. And we've been told it's exponential and it's six. So I'll just click to the side. So this is the sort of profile of how uh, cars start coming to my car wash. So it's exponential six. And uh, get some mo a, a lot more customers come earlier, but it sort of tails off. Uh, let's leave it at that for now. Let's just click to the side. And so that's six. And let's apply it and say OK. We also know that uh, this is the uh, car wash. So let's put the car wash in there. And we know it takes exactly 10 minutes. So we're OK with that. Oh, spelt it wrong. Let's put it in there. Uh, another um, feature within FlexSim that slightly speeds things up is that we're currently on a processor. We want to move to the next processor. I, I could click on Apply and OK, and uh, it, this window would disappear, and then uh, double click on that window. Or down the bottom, it allows us to go to the next object that is the same as the current object. So the next object from processor one is processor two. And there we go. So we've jumped to processor two, and this is a waxing. Let's call it waxing station. And we know that it takes exactly 15 minutes. OK, so apply and OK. And this is the sink. Just to give it a nice name, I uh, I come along the M6, M62 and I come down off on the M621. So cars are going to come driving along. They're going to, on the M62, they're going to come off in the car park. They're going to go to the car wash, go to the waxing station, and then they're going to go down the M621. 
I think we need to add some more things. Uh, so our car park has a maximum space of 20. Of 20. So, so if I double click on the car park, the queue, and let's call this car park, our maximum content is 20. So there we go, apply. If I run this model now, nothing would happen because uh, we haven't told the uh, objects that are coming from the source to go anywhere. And the objects are going to be what we call the flow item, and it's going to look like a, a box. There are different objects and stuff we can send down. If you don't like those objects, then you can, again, you can create a 3D model and create your own. Uh, there is an urge to, to use a truck for this example, but the, the model that comes in is huge uh, and it, uh, it's, uh, it's not really necessary. A box will do. Remember the more complex object shapes that go through your model, it's obviously going to slow your, uh, your computer down. So uh, that box is, for me is a car and it's going to be brown. I can change the color, I can do anything I want with these sort of things, but for today I'm happy that it's a box. Uh, but it's we have no way of knowing where it's going uh, at the moment because we haven't connected anything. We could go to the A there, but I'm going to hold down the A key. So if you watch the cursor now, it's an, uh, an arrow and it changes to uh, like a, a chain and let go and on. So, and you must go from, uh, it's directional. So I, I want cars to go from the M62 to the car box. So I click on the, hold down the A key, click on M62 and you get this uh, little yellow elastic band with the A old, uh, still held down, go to car park and click. And if you look very carefully, you can see you've got direction. These red triangles are coming out, yeah? So it's directional. So if I actually look at the um, source now, and this is one way of finding out uh, if your model doesn't work, it's probably because you've got the wrong way around. If you go to general, in uh, the ports, so that is an output port. So let's look at output port. So output port number one is going to car park. We can have multiple output ports. So what, but what we do know is output port one is going to the car park, which is correct. So let's just zoom out a little bit. Uh, and I, I want to join them, all the rest up using an A key. So A, car park, drag and move to car wash. Hold down the A key, car wash drag and go to station and then from station to M62. So we'll see what that looks like for the car wash with input and output ports. Just move this to the side a little bit. Oh, don't want that big. Uh, let's just move this a little bit over. So if we go to general, our input port for car wash should be the queue, which it is, and our output port should be the waxing station, which it is. That is the biggest area where students um, get errors and stuff. The input ports and the output ports are, mi are mixed up. Don't worry about the center port now. We'll talk about that in a, a new tutorial. Uh, you can, if you've got multiple output ports uh, or input ports, you can rearrange them. So that uh, if you're always sending to one object to output port one and another object to output port two, and it turns out that you've got them the wrong way around, um, you can just re-rank them. Okay, so that's our model. What I want to do is run this example for 480 minutes. So uh, let's stop after 480 minutes. That's a, a day, a day's work. I'm going to get into the idea of pressing reset and run. Um, what we're waiting for now is, uh, if you remember. Uh, we had an, uh, an exponential distribution of six, so let's speed it up a little bit. So things should start appearing in a little while. There we go, we get a little box appearing, going along. And what's happening is uh, this box is taking 15 minutes to go along there, it's taking 10 minutes to go along there. And because uh, when this gets to the end, it's having to wait for that one, so I'll just slow it down. Um, maybe not that slow. Let's crank it up a bit. You can see now it's stopped. No more boxes can come in while this is waiting. So there's a there's, there's a bottleneck here. So it's. Uh, but I wonder how many 
in a day shift, how many cars do you think we uh, we complete? So we can run it, speed it up, might speed it up really fast, get some information. So I'm going to crank it right up. And here we go. So that's 400, and that's a, a, a day shift. So we have 29 strange it's called inputs to an output source so 29 cars have been uh, washed and waxed we've got one on the waxing machine and one on the car wash so you could argue that yeah i'm not going to leave them halfway through so let's say 31 31 uh, cars are uh, uh, cleaned but how many are in the car uh, car park so i've got a full complement 20 people are still in the car park and we're going to have to Go back and say, I'm sorry, we're closed now. But that doesn't tell us the whole story. This source can only send objects to the car park if there's space for them. So how many times did it create a, a car and it looked and, and it was full? We don't know. So what we can do here is just reset. We want to know how many unhappy customers drove past my car park and went to the our com competitors up the road. So what we can do is put Q, another queue in here. I'm going to rename that. And let's call that unhappy uh, customers. We'll leave it at a thousand. Don't think we get anywhere near that. And I'm going to join uh, the M62 to uh, the unhappy customers using an A key. Now this is where we need to uh, understand about how objects flow from one object to another. You can see we've got output port one and output port two, so we can should be able to see that quite clearly in the generals so uh, output port one and output port two so that's worked so if we go to the floor tab how our objects flow from one to the other so this creates an object the source and it sends to first available port so the first available port is always output port one so it will try and send something to output port one if the queue is full it's now not available. So the next available port is output port two. So the default for this is fine today uh, and we're okay. Uh, we're going to use, change the output settings um, quite a lot and we're gonna use, use transports and everything, but just for today, first available actually works fine for us. So it's gonna to go to Q. If Q is uh, full, it's not available. So the next available is uh, unhappy customers. So. Let's uh, reset and run again. Uh, speed it up a little bit. It looks like we're getting quite a lot in our uh, unhappy customers. So yeah, we've got 29 again. We've got uh, two halfway through, so uh, it's 31. Uh, we've actually uh, got 19 now. Don't we get? We've got a little bit of randomness in here, so um, it's 19. But we've also got 16 unhappy customers who came to our uh, our, our uh, car wash and couldn't get in. So we, we, we've actually, if you're 19 and 16 is um, what's that? 35, um, and we're only we're only. Uh, making 31 customers happy. So we're actually upsetting more customers than we're actually uh, pleasing here as well. So that's not great. So this, you could argue one solution is we, we're seeing that this waxing machine is the bottleneck. So let's just move that up there. I'm gonna right click on that waxing machine because uh, oh, everything's set correctly for me. I'm gonna copy, just move further down here and edit and I'm gonna paste. I don't like the number. Um, let's call it uh, Waxing Station 9. I'm just going to call this Waxing Station 2. Uh, you can see that the, the processor times, because I copied and pasted it, is, is, is come across with it. I'll call that Waxing Station 1 and apply and OK. I need to join these up now, so I'm going to join an A up there to there and from, from Waxing Station 2 to the M621. Let's go into this car wash now. Let's just move it across here. Uh, I'm interested in the way uh, this object is sending from its uh, output port. So it's got two output ports and it's just first available. So 
if we leave, it, leave this as it is, it's always going to send objects to waxing station one, uh, which uh, means that waxing station one is going to be uh, the main uh, waxing station, and waxing station two is going to be like an overflow, uh, which is maybe fine, but um, I think it's a little bit unfair. I think that, that uh, you want to share uh, this more evenly. So we can uh, click on the drop down and let's go to uh, round robin if available. So what that will do is uh, it will go to waxing station one, then the next object will go to waxing station two if it's available, um, and then it, the next one will go to waxing, back to waxing station one if available. So it's, it gives a bit more um, sharing the, uh, the workload between these two. So it's okay that. And let's reset and run. Uh, so you can see, looks like the randomness um, is working. Uh, we're still getting some more Nampi customers, uh, but we've got 42 completed, and they've got two in in a, in the other stations, and so so we're getting 44. And we've got 19 there and three there, so 19, 20. So we we clearly get it by purchasing a second waxing station uh, it's clearly affected the throughput uh, but what's happening now is uh, if you click on um, this waxing station one you can see the output is 21 it's idle 30 33 and a third percent of the time it's actually not doing anything for a third of its production time and and the other pr processor is idle 34.4% of the time. So it's not doing anything for a lot of the time. Um, and yet what happens with the car wash is idle 9.3% of the time. And that 9.3% is actually the start of the day. When um, part, uh, when cars are turning up in the first thing in the morning. Uh, so it's... Uh, after that first uh, sort of six to ten minutes when the first car appears, it's absolutely chocker is that. So what, what we said, wait, what we know, 42 plus 244. So let's stop, reset. I wonder if buying another another car wash would help. So it's right click, edit, copy, right click, edit, paste, put it in here. I'm going to rename that to... Uh, Car wash two. Uh, it's taken the data through to processor one. Let's click on the little button, go back to. Uh, oh, that's not the right one. So the look, see. There we go. So it's finding all the different processors. So can I wash one. Just get the names right. I'm going to join an A key there to there, and an A key there to there. And there to there. All right. I'm just going to check that the the flow option to go random has gone through. So random. Right. And let's um, let's do the same thing with this. So it's instead of first available, let's just send it to uh, random. Apply and OK. So let's reset and run. Uh, run our model. Sorry, if you remember, it was 42, 55. So we we're getting a little bit more. More. Um, you can see the idle time for the processors now uh, is dropped, um, and the idle time for the uh, uh, the, the washing machines is dropped. So the, the waxing and washing, you've got a little bit of uh, idle time. Uh, you've got no unhappy customers other than the ones that are in the car park, which is seven. Uh, and it looks like the maximum content. If you actually click on here, and you can go to this uh, general statistics at the uh, the side. You can see the content at the moment is seven, and the maximum of content in that car park was eight, which you know that might be um, uh, acceptable to you. Uh, possibly that isn't acceptable. That uh, the minimum wait time was zero, and that's probably your first customer in the morning. Um, the maximum person, uh, maximum time a person waited was 58.48 minutes. Well, if 
if it was me, I would not wait 58 minutes. I'm not convinced. Well, I wouldn't wait 33 minutes, if I'm honest. Um, so uh, you can see what's happening is we we increasing the um, amount of time these processors are being used, but that's being fed by a large amount of wait time in the car park. So that is a very, very brief introduction to Flexim. Uh, I hope it's been useful to you. Uh, there are a lot of tutorials out there and uh, there's a lot a lot of tutorials uh, that follow this one. Um, uh, thank you very much for listening.